what is mental well-being and how can you achieve it? Mental well-being is an interesting topic, very timely, and we are going to launch this program today and hopefully will be many programs coming up that you will enjoy. My name is Casey Conrad. And first, allow me to say thank you. You could have chosen to be anywhere else in the world right now, and you've chosen to be here with me. And I really appreciate it. And for this, I'm very grateful, very grateful. Thank you all very much. Now, a bit about me. I'm a well being specialist with 30 years' experience in the areas of individual and group, personal and professional development. I am the uh, managing partner and co founder of ChangeWorks Well Being Center in Abu Dhabi. You can find us on the web at www.changeworksad.com. That concludes my commercial. Please feel free to post any questions you might have in the Q&A and they'll be answered at the end of the session. I'm pleased and honored to be here speaking with you about something as important and relevant as mental health and mental well-being. This program, Jusur, or Bridges in English, is brought to you by the Emirates Foundation in connection with volunteers.ae. Jusur is a mental well being initiative focused on connecting minds and creating a platform where we can connect, share, and heal together. More inspiring than triumph in the face of mental illness is the courage to tell your story. The aim is to create an online platform that's dedicated to celebrating the journey of brave individuals who have overcome mental challenges and to inspire others to tell their own stories. For more information about Jasur and its initiatives, please visit www.volunteers.ae. If you or someone you know is seeking mental health support or is going through mental challenges right now, please contact the National Mental Health Support Line at 800-HOPE. That's 800-4673. Again, I'd like to remind you if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the Q&A section and we'll answer them at the end of the session. So what exactly does it mean when we say good mental health? What does mental well-being actually look like? What should it feel like? These are questions many of us ask and even more now in this new normal we're all experiencing. The world has turned in a very interesting way. And many of us are wondering and worrying what's next. In this presentation, I'll share as much information as I possibly can in the time allotted, designed to bring a bit of clarity to these subjects, as well as provide a few simple yet effective techniques to reduce stress and anxiety and to improve your mental well being. We all have mental health. This is not dissimilar to our physical health, and giving attention to it is just as important. Each of us has our own personal level of physical health, and it's the same for our mental health, our mental well being. There are highs and there are lows and there is everything in between. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, mental health is not just the absence of mental disorder. It's defined as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his 
or her own potential and can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make contributions to her or his community. Mental well-being, on the other hand, is a little bit different. And we can describe it, we can gauge it, by attaining these six key elements, self-acceptance, personal growth, a life's purpose, environmental mastery, having control over what's around us, autonomy, having our own identity, and positive and rewarding relationships with those around us. Our mental well-being is often affected by big life events that we have little or no control over. Now, in this age of COVID-19, when we are isolated more and more, not only by being locked down in our homes, but also when we go out, wherever we go, wearing masks that hide our faces, and everyone we come in contact with is also wearing a mask. This is such a different type of living for us. There's so much of normal human communication, nonverbal, that's no longer available to us. We can't even tell if someone's smiling at us. They can't tell if we're smiling at them. This separates us even more at a deep level that we may not consciously recognize. This is a perfect time to learn to express your smiles with your eyes. Not being able to socialize with our family groups or our community groups, having to work at home, all of these changes that occurred seemingly overnight may have had an incredibly disruptive effect on your mental well being. It's in these situations, it's about how we respond, the habits we create in these situations our behaviors that will determine in this uncertain time the impact for mental well-being. For example, do you tend to reach out for support or are you likely to withdraw, be on your own? Do you assume the worst in every situation or are you open to new and positive possibilities? Which one are you? It's in these current circumstances that our level of resilience becomes oh so important. Resilience is our ability to cope with change in a time of adversity. By strengthening our resilience, we're better able to maintain a healthy level of mental well being. We're able to attain this and retain this during all of life's ups and downs once we figure it out. Strengthening our resilience allows us to more easily manage and adapt to adversity. Resilience can help protect us from a diminished sense of well-being. These conditions, such as depression and anxiety, can be quelled can be diminished as well when we're resilient. Resilience can also help offset factors that increase the risk of a weakened mental health condition or well being, such as being isolated or finding yourself out of work. Being resilient can improve our coping ability. I'd like to share a few tips with you from the Mayo Clinic in Minneapolis, Minnesota, US, to help improve your resiliency. One, get connected. Building a strong, positive relationship with others, loved ones, or friends can provide you with much needed support and acceptance in good or not so good situations. 
establishing important, important connections by volunteering like this with volunteers.ae or joining a faith or spiritual community. All of these things help you get connected. Make every day meaningful. This is important. Do something that gives you a sense of accomplishment, a sense of purpose every single day. Set goals to help you look toward the future with meaning, not back. Learn from your experience, good in any aspect of our life. Think how you've coped with hardships in the past. Consider the skills and strategies that have helped you through difficult times. You might even consider writing in a journal about the past experiences. This may help you identify good and not so good behavior patterns and possibly guide you to future behavior. Remain hopeful. You can't change the past. None of us can, but you can always look toward the future. Accepting and even anticipating a change makes it easier to adapt and view new challenges with less anxiety. Take care of yourself. Tend to your own needs and your own feelings. Participate in activities and hobbies that you enjoy. Include physical activity in every daily routine. Get plenty of sleep, eat a healthy diet, practice stress management and relaxation techniques such as yoga, meditation, guided imagery, deep breathing, or prayer. We're gonna learn a couple of those today. Be proactive. Don't ignore your problems. Instead, figure out what needs to be done. Make a plan, take some action. Although it can take time to recover from a major setback, traumatic event, or loss, know that your situation can improve if you work at it. Take the steps necessary. Another very important factor to understanding and regarding our mental well-being is the role that our own nervous system plays. Our mental well-being is literally underpinned by our nervous system. Our mental well-being, physical well-being, mental health, and yes, physical health are all tied together by our nervous system. Interesting, right? Mental and physical are always connected. Our nervous system is divided into two parts, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, when we are in our parasympathetic nervous system, this is the state that we're meant to be in most of the time. Our bodies are calm and balanced. Our minds are calm and balanced. We feel relaxed and in a state of high mental well being. Our parasympathetic state is known as the rest, digest, and repair state. When we're in this state, our bodies produce the appropriate amounts of chemicals which allow us to rest and relax, experience happiness, experience love and compassion for others. Our immune systems are strong and we are generally in a holistic state of well-being. What a wonderful place to be, just as we're meant to. When we're in our sympathetic nervous systems, our sympathetic states, our bodies are in a state of high stress and we experience a highly diminished state of well-being. You may be familiar with the phrase fight, flight, or freeze. This describes the state when our sympathetic nervous system is engaged. This is our survival mode. 
we begin to produce a number of stress chemicals within our body. Epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenalines, cortisol, and a number of other chemicals that are necessary to allow us the ability to escape a predator or stand and defend ourselves. When we are in this sympathetic state, this state of fight, flight, or freeze, our blood flow is directed to our extremities, our arms, our legs, and directed away from our digestion and our internal organs, and even away from our brains. Our digestion slows, our thought process become less clear, our immune system slows way, way down and can't protect us. Being in this sympathetic state, state of fight or flight for long periods of time, can begin to exacerbate thoughts of fear, thoughts of loss. The more we have these thoughts, the more anxious, stressed, and fearful we become. Holding us in this vicious cycle, perpetuating that state of fight, flight, or freeze. This perpetual state of fight, flight, or freeze takes a huge toll on our physical well-being as well as our mental well-being. Because the chemicals necessary for rest and relaxation, melatonin, or serotonin for happiness and joy, and oxytocin for a sense of care, compassion, and love for ourselves and others cannot be produced in the proper amounts. Imagine being in a perpetual state of fight, flight, or freeze takes a huge toll on us physically, breaking down our bodies and lowering the ability of our immune system to protect us. Being able to recognize when we're, when you're in this state of fight, flight, or freeze, when we are in our sympathetic nervous system state, having self-available tools and techniques to slow this process and bring us back to our parasympathetic state where we're meant to be is a vital way to maintain a mental and physical well-being throughout. There are a number of ways you can bring yourself back to this rest, digest, and repair state. I'm going to list a few. Some of them you've heard of, some of them maybe not. If you'd like more information on any of the techniques that I'm going to mention, any of the tools or practices, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to share the information with you after the session. A few things that may work for you and are fairly simple to find around Abu Dhabi and most places. Breathing, breath work, meditation, whatever that means to you. Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga. Walking in nature, nature that appeals to you. Listening to music. Your favorite music is best. Reiki or other types of energy work. Again, you can find them around here in the UAE. We provide those at ChangeWorks. And laughter yoga, laughing for no reason. <laughs> laughter is the best medicine. I'm going to share with you here just a few simple techniques. You can learn them in a very short time, and you can do them anywhere. You can practice them whenever or wherever you like, or whenever you feel the need. It's up to you. So please join me in these exercises. And the first thing we're gonna do is begin with a breathing exercise. Everybody breathes. So please join me. And now I'd like you to just take a moment, check in with yourself. How are you feeling? 
How are you feeling physically? How are you feeling emotionally? Check in, just notice. Is there any tension anywhere in your body? If so, where? Notice it. And now, I want you to just take a breath in, your normal rhythm of breath, and pay attention to what that feels like. How is your breathing rhythm? Wonderful. And now, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, and then I'm going to guide you. We are going to take in some breaths. We are going to breathe in for a count of seven, hold it for a count of five, and exhale, release it for a count of eight. And it's very important that you exhale all of the air out of your lungs. We don't do this very often. And what happens is a bunch of stuff gets stuck in the bottom of our lungs because we don't use the lung capacity that we have. And this is very important for lung health. So again, I am going to ask you to breathe in for a count of seven. I'll count you in. Hold it for a count of five and release for a count of eight. You're more than welcome to have a heavy sigh as you release. And we're gonna do this a few times. So just follow along with me, nothing for you to think about, nothing for you to do, except what comes natural to you, breathing. Okay, and if you close your eyes, this can be very helpful as well. So take a deep breath in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold, two, three, four, five, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, two, three, four, five, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now just allow yourself to return back to your natural breathing. Open your eyes. Take a moment. And again, check in with yourself. Notice how you feel now. Notice how you feel physically. Notice how you feel emotionally. Do you feel any tension in your body? If so, where? Notice if the tension you were feeling has diminished or maybe it's gone away completely. Notice how you feel. This is just one simple breathing technique that you can do anywhere at all, any time of the day or night, when you feel yourself starting to become anxious or nervous or stressed. You can just breathe something you do naturally already. Wonderful. Good job. Now, one more exercise that we're going to do 
is a brief meditation. And oftentimes people will come to me and they'll say, oh, Casey, I don't know how to meditate. I've tried and tried to meditate. I just can't do it. I just can't clear my mind. I can't stop my thoughts. And I'm here to tell you that's okay. Meditation is not the absence of thought. Meditation is simply quieting yourself and allowing any thoughts that you do have to just go by rolling through your mind without attaching yourself to any of them. Even the Dalai Lama says his mind is never quiet. He just doesn't catch on to any of his thoughts. So now we're going to do this brief meditation. Please join me. And the first thing I'll ask you to do is make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can. Sitting or lying down, it doesn't matter. Just so you're comfortable. You can even lower the lights if you'd like to. Take a moment to arrange yourself in the most comfortable way you can be wherever you are in this moment. And I'm just going to sit here while you do that. Give you just a moment. Maybe you need a blanket or a pillow. Feel free to get one. Okay, and now I'm going to wheel myself out of the view so you won't be tempted to look at me while you're doing the meditation. You can focus strictly on keeping your eyes closed and listening to my voice. Okay, and we will begin. Wonderful. Now if everyone's ready, take a deep breath and allow yourself to become even more comfortable even more relaxed. Take a deep breath in. Everything starts with a deep breath. Take one more deep breath in. And this time, allow your inhale to be just a little longer That's right. Breathing in and breathing out. And now on your next breath, breathe in as deeply as you can, holding at the top of your breath for as long as you like, for as long as is comfortable for you and then releasing, letting your inhale and your exhale speak to you. Breathing in and breathing out. And one more deep cleansing breath. And on this exhale, allow the exhale to be just a little longer than your inhale. This naturally relaxes the body. Close your eyes and gently notice any tension or any discomfort in your body. Breathe deeply 
and make any adjustments needed for you to be as comfortable as you can now. Take three more deep breaths in your own time, at your own rhythm, your own natural pace, easily and effortlessly, being aware of the rising and falling of your chest with each breath. As you settle into your own natural rhythm of breath, being aware of all of the sounds around you, you know these are just everyday sounds. These are not distractions, not disruptions, simply, naturally. The sounds around you as you breathe in and out. Begin to notice the mind as it wanders, jumping from thought to thought. When it does, gently, lovingly, guide your attention back to the rising and falling of your chest. Notice this. Simply continuing this practice, observing the sensations of breath, observing the sensations of air in your lungs, through your nose, down your throat, filling your lungs. Notice this. Notice the mind as it wanders. Thoughts that come and go have no meaning for you. Return your attention to your breath. Breathing in, follow the breath. In through your nose, your throat, your lungs, breathing out, follow the breath, out your lungs, your throat, your nose. You may notice, be aware, that the air you breathe in is just a bit cooler and the air you breathe out. Notice this. The mind wanders gently, lovingly, guide attention back to the breath, always to the breath. Letting go of all have to's, musts, shoulds, lasms, all expectations, all judgments. Letting go, just sitting or lying, breathing, being, you here, now.
breathing in, naturally being aware of the rising of your chest. Breathing out, simply noticing the falling of your chest. Learning to be comfortable in stillness. Becoming aware of what it's like to just sit and breathe. Notice this. Now, when you're ready, and only when you're ready, take a deep, deep breath. Gently open your eyes when you're ready. Feeling relaxed, refreshed, calm, and still. now coming back joining me here I want to thank you so much for being here with me today and I'm anxious to hear what it was like for you so one more time take a moment check in how are you feeling how are you feeling physically? How are you feeling mentally, emotionally? Have you noticed that through this breathing exercise we did and through this meditation, you have now reached your parasympathetic nervous system? This is what it's meant to feel like. This is what you're meant to feel like most of the time. Thank you very much for joining me. And now I will answer any questions that you might have. Namaste. Okay, I'm ready for questions. Okay, Casey, thank you so much for the wonderful session and meditation. Uh, I enjoyed it myself, and I'm sure everyone here enjoyed it as well. Um, we'll start with the first question. Um, someone said, can we reprogram our brains on how to react to certain situations, like how to take a fight stance instead uh, of the usual flight freeze mode? Absolutely. Um, what was the name of the questioner? Uh, it's from Anonymous. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, Anonymous, we can absolutely reprogram ourselves. We uh, work within, <clears throat> excuse me, the subconscious mind. All of our beliefs are in there, our fears. This is a very deep conversation, but definitely we can reprogram ourselves. And the way we know we can reprogram ourselves is the simple fact that we've been programmed in the first place. So most of our fears, most of our habits, most of our behaviors stem from beliefs that we have. And those beliefs that stop us or don't allow us to move forward in our lives or achieve the things that we'd like to achieve, those things mostly stem from limiting beliefs. And through the kind of work that we do, through coaching, neuro-linguistic psychology, hypnosis. Hypnosis is a very quick and effective way to reprogram things because it works directly with your subconscious where all of these things need to be changed. 
It's the only place these things can be changed. So I hope that answered your question. The short answer is absolutely. Thank you very much for the question. I appreciate it. It was a good question. Great. Thank you, Casey. Okay, another question. Um, when is the best time of the day for this breathing, uh, breathing exercise? Ah, the best time of the day for this breathing exercise is whenever you feel stressed, tense, or anxious. It will help settle your body down in quick fashion. It's actually the body's own um, relaxation mechanism. What's actually happening is as we're breathing deeply, we're stimulating our vagus nerve, which is the um, nerve in, within our body that automatically turns on our parasympathetic nervous system. So as we stimulate it, laughing also stimulates it, by the way. But as we're breathing deeply, it stimulates this vagus nerve system and it allows us immediately to begin to relax. So anytime you need it, there is no, there is no bad time to use this. Thank you very much for the question. Um, so another relevant question uh, from Khaled, how many times a day is good enough? Again, these things are very individualistic and you cannot overdose on breathing. So I would say as many times as you need to, um, as long as you're not making yourself dizzy or hyperventilating, that is, we had to add this caveat. But if you are just doing the breathing techniques that I, just this one simple one I showed you, there's also um, a particular healing type of breathing. It's a whole system called Wim Hof. If you'd like more information about that, Khalid, please just send the note and we'll send that to you. But breathe, breathe as much as you like. It's, it's very good for you. Thank you for the question. Okay, a question from Mohra. Uh, any suggestions you have, uh, you advise on well-being? Uh, suggestions for books? Uh, books. Um, well, that's a really good question. And there are so many, um, there are so many writers out there and so many choices for books on well-being and uh, mental health. I enjoy reading um, some books by Eckhart Tolle. Um, even I also enjoy reading some books and videos from Tony Robbins. He's he's a um, you know a motivational speaker, but also he helps us to kind of get out of ourselves, which helps with our well-being. And he creates a lot of um, lovely exercises as well. Um, there's so many people. Um, there are, it depends on exactly what you're looking for. I'm, I'm, let me send a list to you because off the top of my head, I can think of Deepak Chopra, Dr. Joseph Desenza. I, there are so many people that I would prefer if I could just send you a list. Would that be all right? I think maybe at the end of uh, the session, we'll post uh, a link to your social media. Maybe if anyone wants to get more information, they can contact you, to you through the social media. Um, Thank you. Another question. Uh, Khaled also commented that, uh, uh, does this help, help sleep? Because he almost fell asleep. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's again, stimulating our uh, parasympathetic nervous system, which allows us to produce the right amounts of melatonin and the things that allow us to rest and feel good. And it brings us into a relaxed state. Most of us these days do not get into this state very often. So when we're in that sympathetic fight or flight state, Sleep eludes us. Our sleep is sporadic. Um, either we have insomnia where we can't go to sleep or we go to sleep and then we wake up because our bodies cannot rest. They literally do not have the ability to completely rest. So yes, this will definitely help with sleep. Thank you for the question. It's a good question. Okay. Um, another question from Anonymous in the Q&A. How does my diet and food uh, affect my anxiety and tension? 
Ah, this is a very good question. Um, everything that we consume, right? All of our physical and mental health are connected. We cannot separate them. We are one being. And when we eat certain foods, and everybody is individual, so everybody's a little bit different, but the things that we put into our body, like sugars, especially artificial sugars, and that includes um, like aspartame and things like sweet and low and those sorts of things equal. Um, but regular sugar as well. Regular sugar, our bodies do not do well with that. And caffeine that we put into our bodies and a lot of processed foods have chemicals that our body is not meant to be digesting, not meant to be processing. And when we do that, our body is all over the place um, and it can create anxiety in us. Some people have some um, food allergies, gluten, for example. A gluten allergy can create in a person a lot of anxiety, anger, all kinds of emotional um, reactions. And it's, it's from a physical allergy. So because of there's so many artificial things that are out there for us to put in our bodies that we need to be very, very aware. If you're having an issue like this, where you think some food is affecting your emotional health, your mental health, even your physical health, make a food journal. Chart how you're feeling after you eat certain foods. This will help you to eliminate things a little bit at a time. Thank you for the question. A, quick, a question from Hannah or Hannah. Uh, what kind of habits shall one build to improve mental well-being? Okay, good question. Um, I'm going to tell you for myself, um, I've just gone through this for myself because my habits were not um, conducive to my good mental health since all of this coronavirus and things. I've, my work is sporadic because I'm working at home, so I, I didn't take my own coaching advice and set specific hours. So now I start my day with a morning meditation before I ever look at my phone, um, sometimes before I ever get out of bed, I will do at least a 10 to 20 minute morning meditation. And then um, I will get up and do uh, five days a week. I'll do Qigong, uh, Qigong um, for uh, between 30 and 40 minutes. And then I start my day. And it has made an enormous um, improvement in my well being because I'm, remember in the tips, I'm tending to my own needs first before I go through the emails and messages um, and try to get back to what everybody else needs from me. I take care of myself first. Thank you for the question. Okay, so a question from Naveen. I always try to do breathing exercises. It usually makes me feel dizzy. Any reason behind that? Yes, um, thank you for the question, Naveen. When we're we're breathing, especially when we're not used to breathing in deeply, there's some um, change of oxygen flow between our, our body and our brain, which um, is a change. And oftentimes when we get more oxygen into the brain, it can also make us feel dizzy. So it may be that you just need to be mindful of that, maybe breathe more slowly. And is it I'd like to ask her, do you feel dizzy after a series of breaths or is it at a particular point during the breath? Okay, we'll wait for Naveen to post. Okay. I'll move to another question. Does okay. social media affect our mental health negatively? If so, social does media? it have a positive effect? Social media. I'm gonna say the question back to you because some of that cut off. What I believe the question is, is does social media or can social media have a negative effect on our mental health or can it have a positive effect? Is that correct? Yes. The first part okay. is 
The second part, if so, does it also have a positive effect? Ah, okay. Yes, yes, both. Um, one thing that happens with social media is that, um, well, one thing now in the, the news, it's um, not very good news um, with all of the things happening in the world. So to be ingesting all of that not so good news has an effect on us physically and emotionally. So yes, it can definitely have a not so good effect on us. Uh, also, what has an effect that's not so good on us is that we spend an awfully large amount of time going through social media and that brings us to a point where we're comparing ourselves to others like and we all know because we all do it we only most of the time we either put the best of our lives in there or the worst of our lives in there there's virtually nothing in between like if i just get up in the morning and have a normal day who wants to hear about that so social media is like a non-stop reality tv show we know intellectually that most of it's excuse me a bunch of nonsense however we can't stop watching it so um, I suggest I suggest this to all of my clients I do it for myself as well take a social media holiday notice how you feel start slowly start for just a couple of hours a day and then set only a couple of hours a day that you're going to check social media because so many people have an addictive behavior to social media. Think about the last time an entire day went by that you did not check, any of you did not check something on social media. And imagine going through a day without it. Does that bring up some feeling of a little bit of anxiety, of stress, or maybe excitement? So I suggest everyone start to take social media holidays and just start small. Don't overwhelm yourself, but start small and then work up to maybe one full day a week with no social media. It will change, change your life exponentially, I promise. Thank you for the question. Uh, so Yvine came back with an answer. Uh, she said after some time, like after five minutes. Okay. Then in that case, um, I would just stop the breathing, like just do it for a little bit at a time. Maybe, maybe do 10 breaths at a time and then practice 10 breaths for a while. And then when you feel really good after that, then do 15 and then work your way up. It's just like exercising. It's just like working out, working out our minds, working out our organs, working out any part of us is like when we start to work out, we need to get in shape to be able to do it fully and at our best. So do what you can do without allowing yourself to get to a point of being dizzy and then work up to it. Just add a few every now and then when you feel ready. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Uh, okay, another question from Sheikha. Uh, can we use the same techniques with our children and together as a family? Absolutely. That is a wonderful idea. I do these techniques. I have 11 grandchildren. I do these techniques with my grandchildren. Um, they, they love it. So when they see me, they, I even make um, recordings to send to them with breathing techniques and with meditations. Uh, and it's wonderful. I'm so happy that they benefit from it. That makes me feel really good. Um, but yes, children, it's amazing to begin to teach children because they are so receptive and it's so effective with them. And if you can begin these habits with your children now, imagine how much more mental well-being, how much more emotionally healthy that they will be as they get older, especially 
during their teenage adolescent years. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, okay, an anonymous question. What techniques can I use to connect with my body? With, my, with your body? Yes. Okay. Um, this breathing technique is good. There is another technique that I like very much. And it's something that you can do just before you sleep. So it also gets you into a more meditative state just before you sleep. But you begin at your feet and you work your way all the way up to the top of your head. And you begin by just taking a couple of deep breaths, getting into a fairly relaxed state. And then imagine your feet, your toes. And in your mind, you just say, you can say it out loud if you want to, toes, how are you feeling? And then pay attention. All of your focus will go to your toes. And then move to your feet, your ankles, your calves, your shins, your knees, your thighs, your hips, all the way up your body. And take time, a couple of moments with each body part and notice the feedback that you get from your body. This is a wonderful exercise and it will be very beneficial because what this does, it allows you to be more in tune, paying more attention. If something in your body does go wrong, you'll become aware of it very quickly. It won't be like, you know, months go by and you find out that you have something going on in your body that's not so good you'll be so in tune with your body after doing this exercise a few times a week that you will begin to notice subtle changes. And what a wonderful gift for yourself. Thank you for that wonderful question. Thank you. Okay, a question from Mansoor. How do you deal with close parents that seem to cause your stress? Close-minded parents? Mm -hmm. that seem to cause all your stress. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the question. Um, I'd like to address something very important. We have a tendency as humans to put responsibility for our feelings on other people. And this makes it even more difficult for us to be able to find our way out of that situation. And I understand um, close-minded parents. Um, we see that all over the place. And I understand um, the need to expand, expand your um, world. First, I would suggest that when you're speaking with your parents, if there's something that is going to be a conflict, perhaps think about whether or not it's, it's a good thing to even have the conversation with them. And understand that all of our feelings, we are responsible for. We control how we feel. We allow things that come from outside to affect us but it's not about the outside, it's about the inside. It's about how we receive it, how we take it in, how we process it. So if you understand that people can create stress in you only if you allow it, this is a good first step. And when you're having these conversations, if they become a conflict, then Start this in your mind. Do what you need to do. Don't engage. Don't defend yourself. When we begin to defend ourselves, it's because we feel guilty, whether it's defending a belief, an action, or anything. Once we begin to defend ourselves, become defensive, it's because we feel guilty. If you have nothing to feel guilty about, do your best to remain neutral. Use these breathing techniques to allow yourself to remain neutral. And again, take into consideration 
what it is you're actually feeling. What kind of stress are you feeling? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling angry? What are you feeling? Are you feel, feeling not heard, not accepted? It's very good to be able to identify what the emotion is that we're feeling. Then it becomes much easier to deal with it. Um, this is something we could talk about in depth. If you have any other questions for me, please feel free on this subject to send it to me and then we can have a, a conversation. Thank you for the question. I think we'll take one last question. Uh, can these techniques help with depression? They can. Um, depression, depression is um, an interesting topic. Depression is, as we talked about in, in the presentation, it's becoming overwhelmed with thoughts, fears, anxiety, uh, worry. Uh, so when we have these thoughts, these feelings, using these types of techniques have been proven effective on the symptoms of depression. We use them um, with our clients. We also have another um, option, which is having a Reiki session, which is a hands-on um, energy work. These things help when we bring the body back into the parasympathetic nervous system, things become much more balanced. And depression is an imbalance in the body, in the brain. So to be able to bring that uh, balance back is a huge, huge help. So the answer is yes, these techniques can help. And we have other techniques that can also help. However, I want to add this caveat that anyone who has been diagnosed with clinical depression or feels as if they may be experiencing a clinical depression, not just some low times or sad times, please see a mental health practitioner. Thank you for the question. Okay, I think um, we're done. Casey, would you like to say something before we wrap up? I just want to say thank you. I truly appreciate it. I'm grateful for everyone who's attended, everyone who's watched, and especially for those of you who asked the questions. And thank you very much. This is a very important topic. And especially now, people are experiencing stresses and anxieties that they've never experienced before because we're experiencing as a global nation something that no one's really ever experienced before. So I would just leave you with this. Be gentle with yourselves. Be gentle with those around you because we are all doing the best we can. And if you're feeling like there's someone you'd like to talk to or you're feeling like you are at a point where you can't help yourself, please reach out. Reach out to someone who can help you. Thank you very much. Again, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Casey, for your time. It was an amazing session. And I'm sure that everyone here enjoyed it just as much as I did. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in today um, and also to mention that if you're interested in uh, maybe contacting Casey for um, any reason, uh, you can go to her social media posted in the chat section. Um, and also, uh, it's worth it to mention that next week we'll have uh, an interesting session as well. Um, uh, it's laughter yoga, uh, as recommended by you as well, Casey. <laughs> Uh, which <laughs> enjoy. Uh, for more information on the session, you can go to the website, uh, which will be posted uh, in the chat in a minute. Uh, and also, uh, if you or someone you know are seeking uh, help or mental support, please don't hesitate to uh, contact the mental, mental support uh, hotline uh, on 800-4673-HOPE. Um, thank you again, Casey. This was an amazing session. Uh, please, Thank everyone, you. 
Uh, if you need any information, go to the website. Um, on behalf of the Jusur uh, team, I'd like to thank everyone um, and uh, see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.